Okay, hi. <laughs> uh, so it's time to start. Uh, I uh, hope you had a good lunch. Uh, so this session is about SLUB, not any of the others. And uh, that's because uh, last year we agreed uh, the slab can be removed and nothing is blocking it. You've already heard it today. And yeah, so specifically it was deprecated at 6.5 and the target was to wait until the LTS kernel is cut for the last year, which turned out to be 6.6. Uh, and we removed it a bit later, but nevertheless, it's gone. And uh, now we can, uh, with just one allocator left, we can now uh, do new stuff that we don't have to bother to re-implement it in all the three allocators on, or do some configuration subset that's compatible with it. And uh, another immediate benefit was that uh, some of the hot parts no longer have to go to the common layer, which is great because function calls are uh, more and more expensive every day, thanks to the CPU vulnerabilities. And uh, there are still some ongoing cleanups of code that was specific to SLA, but not obviously. And I, I'm not focusing on them anymore, but people are looking for it and sending me patches, and that's great. And uh, yeah, I guess nobody was unhappy about the removal until I've seen uh, LWN coverage of uh, talk about embedded Linux on OSS, where the, it seems like the embedded Linux guys were a bit unhappy that this is one of the reasons why the kernel becomes larger, because SLOB was really optimized for the uh, smallest devices. At the time uh, it, of its removal, it led to adding the slab tiny variant, which mitigated all of that, uh, not all of that, but most of that extra overhead. And I and from what I've seen in the coverage, they were also unhappy that the deprecation and removal was too fast. I think it took quite a long time already, so you cannot always make everyone happy, I guess. But they didn't see, see it as a like blocking obstacle, and we should not uh, bring it back because of that, so that's great. Uh, also, last year there were some concerns expressed that uh, Sloop SLUB had some more overhead of performance in some workloads that were really benefiting more from slab, or there was high, higher memory overhead, and but there were no concrete like efforts to adjust slab to to do any of uh, to mitigate any of that so i'm not sure if maybe david uh, david rientes uh, do you want to maybe talk about whether uh, do you still have see some overhead uh, from slab that you would like to mitigate or how is it going at google with the adoption if you can talk about it Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so as last mill said, after the uh, 2023 LSFMM, it was removed. And so we are still um, in the transition phase uh, to move to uh, slub. But the big business incentive for why we want to be able to do this is because it significantly reduces CPU jitter. Uh, that's very noticeable for a cloud customer especially, is these cache reaps every two seconds that was based on an implementation in slab are very, very noisy for slices of hardware. So we're extremely happy about this. At the same time, we'll be able to share some data, I think probably in the next month or so, but not, no significant blockers right now after we got some issues worked out in our production fleet. And this was made possible, I think, by the great work to do uh, per object accounting for KMEM as opposed to uh, slab pages in general. 
Okay, thanks. That's encouraging. Uh, so, um, more about the current state uh, or what's happening. Uh, we are uh, trying to solve the, the overhead of the KMMCG integration, which is mostly visible in some micro benchmarks, but yeah, it still looks very high, and Linus is unhappy about it. Uh, part of that work is uh, should be merged in the next merge window and went through the MM tree because of the other dependencies, but there's still more more work to do, mainly on the uh, MCG side. I think there's not much to change on the slab integration side. And uh, yeah, another thing that I see a lot is that uh, people would add to like to improve the uh, the security mitigations like against the heap spraying attacks by separating more the KMLOC sites uh, to, to not share the same slab pages or not even reuse the slab pages if the slab virtual thing uh, will be again uh, refreshed and posted again and uh, my big bit of a problem is that I can review the implementation and uh, evaluate what if it, there will be some overhead, but I'm not a security expert, so I cannot assess the security benefits and whether it's worth it. So I have to rely on those people who are more, more familiar with it. So in case any of you are and or know someone, I guess at Google they have uh, experts in this area then please try to try to like uh, respond to those uh, patch patch sets and provide feedbacks i had to drag somebody from the fediverse who wrote a blog post unhappy about uh, the the random kmlog caches to make him actually respond to the, on the mailing list to the new new proposals so that's how I try to uh, deal with this. So uh, what are the next steps or what's going on uh, right now? So for the uh, ongoing work with maple trees and per VMA locking, uh, we are discussing whether, whether it would benefit from some uh, additional, yeah? Can I ask a question on the previous one? Sure, for, sure. For, feel for free the, to interrupt yeah, so, me. So, so for the MCG, uh, the Kim MCG, yeah. you said now the world or the ball is on the MCG side. Uh, I'm wondering if we can still do uh, something on the slab side is to like cache the pre-charge objects because the, so that will kind of bypass the MCG overhead. I, I'm, again, uh, we have to kind of see if it is feasible or whatever the other issue there will be IRQ, non-IRQ context of, but yeah, that's, if you have any thought. Yeah, it, yeah, it could be possible, but other, always there's a cause that you have some objects cached that are for some of the MCG or other of the MCG, and now you have to use only the right ones. So we have to store it somewhere that's easily accessible from that MCG and it could like move the problem elsewhere a bit. So if we can reduce the overhead without uh, without such a trade-off, it would be better. And uh, yeah, uh, Roman said he would be looking into it, so I hope there's still some way to reduce it. I, I mean, one of Linus's ideas was that we don't have to be so strict about not uh, not overcommitting the MCG. It can it can be like acceptable if rarely you overcharge because you didn't realize quickly enough that you are over the limit. But it shouldn't matter if there's just few allocations that escape this way and then you realize you're over the limit and block the subsequent ones. So that could be like cheaper to implement than the exact accounting we have today. 
even like in, in that case, uh, that's a different thing, right? Uh, because here, uh, like, we are not necessarily kind of hitting the limit always. So, so yes, but but we we still uh, like uh, have to say okay, charge this object to the the memcg, which is which has the overhead and update the stats and whatnot. So so all those still have to happen, irrespective you hit the limit or not. So the, the, yeah, to me, like having, again, uh, this is uh, coming back to it's more for like a trade-off between caching something. Because I, I know the, the IOU ring and some other uh, kind of doing uh, these kind of cache, like, or uh, networking as well, cache, they, they kind of have their own internal cache uh, for, for the objects and they do that. Uh, again. Yeah, so, so most of the things I planned to talk to about today is how to like start removing these uh, specific caching layers and up update slap in a way that it can support this without these ad hoc mechanisms. But yeah, there's always a trade-off uh, between the overhead and one overhead or another. So uh, for the maple tree, uh, we are trying to add some uh, per CPU array of objects, which is similar to what you propose, but it's not precharged to a uh, uh, MCG, so anyone can use them. And uh, uh, it, it sh I want to stress that it's different from what Slab had, where this per CPU array was. Uh, the main uh, main part of how it achieved any performance, and it had those per CPU arrays and uh, node shared arrays or LAN arrays. So this this is not going in this direction. It should be only opt-in and for caches that would benefit from it. And the idea is, uh, aside from the usual stuff that. If you free to the array, you can reuse that object more quickly than going through the full slab allocation. And you flush when it's full and refill when it's empty. The main benefit should be that you can pre-fill uh, some needed amount of objects and then use them uh, uh, when you enter some critical section and cannot uh, uh, do normal allocations. Because what the maple tree does today, it uh, calculates the worst case for how much it might need objects in the critical section, and then 9 out of 10 returns back because that was the worst case, and that's costly. So the idea is that the array will be preferred, but it would stay within the slab allocator, and uh, when the maple tree would actually need those, it will get them quickly from the slab allocator. And the idea is that the, to make it fast and uh, not complicated, the, the prefills would, wouldn't be really reservations, and uh, but like optimistic kind of thing where uh, if you are lucky and you're not preempted, you will get those prefilled objects. And we thought that uh, if the cases where you are unlucky would be so rare that uh, in that case you could fall back to an allocation that would be GFP atomic with GFP no fail. And uh, I guess we already know from Michael there's, uh, that shouldn't be happening like that, but maybe you want to explain it yourself. The primary problem with uh, GFP Atomic with no fail is that uh, uh, Atomic reserves are shared over the whole system and you have no control what other users of that reserves are currently doing and um, no fail and Atomic is no-no. I think that we currently even warn on, on that usage. So it would be really appreciated if that can be avoided. Yeah, so we already got some idea that we could keep this optimistic array uh, like for the cases where where you are lucky and nobody steals your objects, but 
it would be backed by some something that would provide real reservations that nobody else could steal and the allocation would have a token that says I, I reserve this and I can use it. I, I have uh, some more details on that later. And uh, another user besides Maple Tree, we thought it would be VMA nodes. Uh, there, there are no uh, reasons there for a prefill, but it should still make it more effective in theory. Uh, until we tried to implement a prototype and Suren was benchmarking that uh, for the maple tree and the VMA nodes that, and we and he always saw some <laughs> regression instead of an improvement which is uh, partly because the slab uh, implementation is really already uh, very efficient, so it just adding the extra uh, layer that's locked by the local lock anyway uh, doesn't uh, on its own improve so much, but we should still benefit from the prefills and the lack of freeing back all those objects that were unused. But uh, we found out that there's a problem with uh, in specifically with the maple trees and uh, VMAs that there are freed by K3 RCU, which means uh, uh, the the freeing doesn't immediately go back to the slab allocator, which would refill the per CPU array, but it's there's a RCU callback and it waits for a grace period, and then when it's the grace period passes, it processes many of the callbacks at once which means the freeings are decoupled in time from the actual time they enter the slab allocator and there might be many of the callbacks to process which immediately overflows the per CPU array and leads to flushing. Sometimes the flushing happens immediately after a refill because you, we can be unlucky and to make things worse, on Android, there's this RCU, no CBS setting that makes only some CPUs process the uh, RCU callbacks. So these CPUs have the objects freed to their per CPU arrays, but the allocating CPUs might be all the rest of them, and they don't benefit from any of that and have to refill the arrays. So what we came up with as an idea is that uh, we create an RCU K3 variant that puts the object immediately into an array that cannot be used for allocation immediately because that would violate the grace period waiting. But once this array is full, uh, it can be offloaded or sent to RCU as a whole. and. Uh, and once the grape period passes, we don't have to flush the objects from the array, but uh, put it in the pool and make it available for all CPUs to like install into their per CPU uh, structure to serve new allocations. And uh, Matthew is always creative with the naming, so he came up with the name Sheaf for these arrays and barn for the numa uh, storage of the processed sheaves. And if, if you've seen his proposal for the slab BOF, that's just an extension of this, whether the sheaves should also replace the struct slab as something that manages all the objects, but that's uh, too early to discuss yet. And uh, the problem with this the only problem with this is that uh, we might be freeing some objects into the sheaf, which becomes full, and uh, to free any more of them, we need to allocate a new sheaf, so we might need to allocate in order to free objects, which is the same problem that K3 RCU might sleep has. That's why it has the might sleep in the name. Sorry. We do have another option though, right? 
I mean, we, we can use the objects themselves as sheaves, but Matthew said that was overcomplicated. So if he doesn't look up, we're cool. Oh, he's looking up now. <laughs> but we can reuse only objects that already passed the grace period. No. What we can do is we can use the start of the object for the RCU head and what we need to tell if it's still uh, usable. And so before we use an object, we can check that. So in, in the case of maple tree nodes, we have uh, a link to the parent node, and it's considered a dead node if it points to itself. So we can see if it's dead before we use the rest of it and the RCU head. Um, and those two things sit at the top of the structure, and then the remaining of the structure can be pointers to other uh, pieces of uh, objects, right? Yeah, and it's also possible to... So you see my point about it being far too complicated, right? <laughs> yeah, but I, I thought Liam was already looking forward to not having to accommodate the RCU hat and... Because if you accommodate an RCU head within the object, you have to be careful because that's modified immediately after the, you call K3 RCU. So all the watchers or the objects, uh, the threads that might be still looking at the stale object need to interpret that. As you said, you have to be careful and you said you would like to avoid that. Like the K3 RCU might sleep does because there's no embedded RCU head, so you don't have to care about that. But the problem is that uh, you need to sometimes allocate in order to free. So whether it's a solvable problem or we have to reserve the memory for the sheaves, or we stay with the fallback of the RCU head, yeah, unless anyone has a better idea. So unfortunately, Paul's not here. He's in the other talk. Um, but he mentioned at lunch that there's there's another way where we can ask for a pointer, and they'll say what the uh, I don't I don't know what the, the pointer does, but but it, you you ask for it, and then you can ask for it again, and then you can pair them, and then if they're the same, then you know the uh, grace period has elapsed. So one way we could do this is. Um, we could be gathering these things on, on the uh, sl slub side, uh, and whenever we add one, we check what the RCU grace period is and see if it has elapsed and, uh, for the last sheaf, and then free that. So there's different, there's, there's a few ideas that Paul probably could help us with on this front as well. You know, yeah, there is, um, RCU does have a little callback so it lets you know like how the grace period is and whether or not you need one or not. So is that what you're talking about or, or something different? Uh, no, it's, it's to get a pointer to what the callback looks at so that you can, that it's compared itself is what I understood. So you don't actually get a callback, but it's like a polling interface, basically. And, and, and yeah, so, so the idea would be we wouldn't actually poll, but when we free the next object, we can see if what we have already collected is okay to reuse. And what's really cool is then we could also use this on the other side, when we want an object, we can say, hey, do we have any that need to be freed? Well, we could just, not free them and just reuse them right away. Yeah, but there's always the possibility that you are unlucky and uh, there's no great period passed and you are still need to free many objects. Yes, and, and right now in the maple tree, I do the very complicated thing that, that Matthew doesn't want to do. Um, so <laughs> we're, we're living with the complications, uh, even though he doesn't know it. So yeah, we, we'll see whether we can come up with something. Uh, okay, another thing I would like to investigate is whether we can uh, remove the BPF specific allocator that resides in this file. And as I posted this uh, 
to pick on the mailing list, Alexei was supportive of that. Of course, uh, there, there will be benefits of that besides from the maintenance aspects, like there are no extra layers to maintain. And uh, what I understand they do, they have something like KMLOC for specific sizes, which uh, has uh, the main, main benefit from SLAP is that it can allocate from NMI context uh, and uh, or in other restricted context. And uh, yeah, we could, uh, we could move that uh, to a slab layer in some another kind of cache. And uh, again, the question is whether we would keep the, uh, the approach of linked list of nodes or move it to some kind of arrays, unless that creates again a problem of allocating to free memory. But I think uh, in general it should be doable and it would uh, make this anyone uh, possible to any you other users to use besides BPF. So, anything to add? <laughs> okay. Thanks. Yeah, uh, and I noticed one of the like not optimal things is, is that the, the list node, that the single list node that's added to the objects in that layer makes, for example, allocations of 64 bytes fall back into the uh, 96 bytes slab cache because uh, yeah, it's added to the object as an extra thing. But if we had caches of this specific size, we wouldn't have this uh, increased overhead. Uh, another thing I looked at is whether it's possible to integrate object pool, which was added recently without, I think, ever uh, CCing Linux MM. And I guess there's no point of to discuss all the specific details because I'm not sure I uh, understand them completely myself yet. I've already been wrong and received some correction on the mailing list, but. Again, it's something that I would like to be integrated in the allocator, at, if possible, because yeah, we don't need many slab-like allocators everywhere. And yeah, and uh, last idea I, I had was to integrate or try to integrate mempool, which is currently also a layer on top uh, of not only slab but also page allocator or, or basically anything because you can provide your own allocate and free callbacks. But there are specific like uh, API for the slab which we could reroute and uh, use, uh, uh, implement differently. So what I think this would gain is that we could like uh, yeah, the slab would be more in control in the reserved uh, objects because they wouldn't sit on an array elsewhere. So we could just set aside some slab pages of the that would cover the needed amount of objects. And if they become fragmented, then slab would be uh, it would be possible to like throw them away and get a fresh non-fragmented one because the objects would be still under slab controls until actually somebody needs uh, to allocate from the mempool. And I think this uh, could also be base for the prefilling of the uh, guaranteed prefilling for the maple node case because we could uh, use this to have really a guarantees, a guaranteed success allocation as a fallback in case of the per CPU array becomes uh, empty because we got rescheduled. Yeah. So that's all I have. So any, any other caching layers you know about that I should look at and integrate into slab or did I found all of them? Or any, any other 
functionality you would like from the slab allocator that's missing today? Okay, if not, then thank you for your attention.